Okay. Okay, so welcome everyone. Let us start with chapter six of Bhagavad Gita. Let us start with the prayers. Om Anyana Timirandasya Gnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Venitan Yena Tasma Shri Guru Venu Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishnam Stavitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shum Shri Rupam Sagra Jatam Sagra Ragunathan Vitantam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada and Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamsha Nama O Krishna Padaya Krishna Krishtaya Bhutare Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pasya Tade Shatarine Vancha Kalpataru Pesha Kripa Sindhu Vacha Patita Nam Pavane Pio Vaishnave Pio Namo Namaha Namo Maha Vadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Nam Nega Ratushe Namaha Panchatatvat Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhaktiavataram Bhaktiakyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bantu Jagatpate Gopesa Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namosute Jetam Shadato Pangor Mamanda Matirkati Matsarvasya Padam Hoja Radha Madana Mohano Divyat Vrindar and Nyakal Patrumada Shri Madrat Nagara Simhasanasto Shri Madrada Shri Lagu Vinda Devo Krista Divi Sevamana Usmanami Shri Madrasa Rasaram Vivam Shri Vatata Sita Karshana Vidu Swanir Muki Gopinatha Eshi Sunaha Stapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhi Vrindavaneshwari Prishbhano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shivasa Adi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shri Jagannath Baldev, Shri Badra Maya Ki, Jai, Shri Laprabhupad Ki, Jai, Nitai Gaur, Premanande, Hari Hari Bo. Okay, so let us start with chapter 6 of Bhagavad Gita, okay? So, if you have any, want to say anything, please raise your hand. Achha, one important instruction, please. Uh, name your uh, Zoom ID with your own name. Please don't main, uh, name your parents' name or iPhone, uh, um, Moto, uh, I don't know, whatever, Samsung. Don't mention that because we are tracking the attendance also. So please ensure that you log in with your own name. Huh? Okay, chal. Let us start with chapter 6. Oh, oh I didn't change this. So let us chap start with chapter I don't know if this is the same chapter. One second, Yes, yes, yes. I'm just changing this. Okay, so let us start with chapter 6. Yeah. So here, you remember this, see, seeing this picture? Anyone remember this? Raise your hand and don't understand. Yes, Mataji. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay. yes, Swara Guru Prasad, what do you remember from this picture? Mataji, I remember that uh, uh, whatever a jiva desires, that is sanctioned by Krishna. Okay, and sanctioned by Krishna. And we are gives? the doer, ma'am. We are the doer. Okay, very good. Yes, Adya? Mataji, uh, whatever the jiva desires, it first goes to uh, our super soul, which is Krishna. And uh, he uh, he gives us that, uh, do, uh, do we have to sanction it or not? If he says yes, then the three material nature uh, fulfills the thought. And... If a uh, super soul thinks that it, uh, this person, uh, person should uh, get this thing afterwards, so the material natures will not fulfill. Very nice. Very good. Yes, Sanvi? Same thing? Anything yes. else you want to add? No. Same thing. Okay. Aradhya, you want to add anything? No, Mataji. Same thing. Okay. So, so my question to Vibhavi, who is the Jiva here? 
Mataji, our desire. No, no, who is the jiva? Jiva, who is the jiva? Mataji, us. Us, we are the jiva. Pallavi, who is the super soul? This is the heart. Our heart is just our super soul. Yeah, he's sitting in our heart, Paramatma. Yes, you think, Shri, who is the material nature? Maya is the material nature. Maybe I did not answer that. For, I did not tell you first. But the material nature is, this is the material nature. She is Maya Devi who sanctions all the desire. Namish, you want to add something? Okay, take it. No worries. So, ultimately, we should know that not even a blade of grass moves without sanction of Krishna. Even the fan or even the AC in our house, even the tube in, our, in the house, even the air which is flowing, everything which is that even when I am moving my hand, okay, I'm me talking, you listening, everything is sanctioned by Krishna and because it is sanctioned by Krishna, that is the only reason why, you know, we are able to uh, perform things. Otherwise, things will not be performed. Krishna can anytime suck the energy from my hand. Krishna can anytime suck the energy from my speech. Or for, this can happen with any one of us. So, the jiva desires, Krishna sanctions, and the material nature provides. Okay. So never. So what do we learn from this? Yeah. What does it do? What What should the doer understand from this? What does the doer learn from this? Yes. That we are not the controllers ah, of anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we are not the controllers. Yeah. Yes, Aditya Bali. <laughs> Mataji, we realize that we we cannot do anything without Krishna's sanction. Absolutely, we cannot do anything without Krishna's sanction. So does that okay? Krishna is going to provide everything to us. Okay, sit back and relax. Does it mean that? Mataji, Anyone? can I say? And we will hear from someone else. Mataji, who's not yet answered. Mataji. Hold on, hold on. Yes, yeah. Subhashri, you want to add that we should just sit back and relax? Because any which is Krishna has to sanction. So, oh, Mataji, we should do our uh, work, uh, uh, we should do all our best, we should put all our um, hard work to the thing and it is up to Krishna. If he wants to sanction us, he will sanction, otherwise he, he won't sanction. He won't sanction, very good. Absolutely. So, Pranjal, what type of work should we do? We should do Akarma. Yes, and what is that Akarma called in Bhagavad Gita, yes, Sanvi? Uh, a karma is called the uh, uh, word you use can specific Krishna yoga, consciousness yoga. or uh, uh, um. I know it's on the tips of your tongue. Can I can tell? Yes. Vyavasaya Atmika Buddhi. Uh, that is Mataji Nishkam, nishkam Karma Yoga. Yeah, nishkam nishkam karma yoga. yoga. Yeah. And what does Nishkam Karma Yoga mean? Yes, Mataji, so, to do the activities yeah. for the pleasure of Krishna. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, Sanskriti, what does this come Karma Yoga mean? Can you remember? It means to uh, like uh, do everything for uh, Krishna and uh, to uh, be in a Krishna conscious way. Absolutely, very nice. Arya, you want to add what does this come Karma Yoga mean? Yoga means to believe in God and worship God and believe in Krishna and uh, believe in Krishna and believe in Krishna conscious way. Absolutely, very nice. Yes, Sachi, you want to add? Yes, Mataji. Uh, Nishkam Karma Yoga means to do the actions or karmas which please God. Which pleases God. This one thing which you all are missing to answer. Yes, Vaishnavi, Vaishnavi hand raise care. Chalo, Vaishnavi se sunte, yes, Vaishnavi. San, oh, Sanchi hai na? Uh, uh, ha, Vaishnavi, bolo. Apna kaam achche se karna chahiye, baaki ka Krishna chhoot chahiye. Ah, apna kaam achche se karna chahiye, baaki ka Krishna bhi chhoot dena chahiye. Lekin aur ek missing hai, one point is missing. Kushali. Mataji, Krishna, Krishna, 
Ah, the Krishna is the source of everything. Very nice. Yes, Neha, you want to add one point is missing here. Ki humko hamara karma karna chahiye and leave it. Mother ji, ah. we should uh, we should uh, perform our uh, karma as sacrifice to Vishnu, Krishna. Yeah, absolutely. Everything we should do as a sacrifice to Vishnu. Absolutely. But one point is missing. Yes, Sadhya. Mataji, we should see everyone as a child of Krishna. Okay, we should see everyone. But there are other things missing. We are doing karma. Kar rahe. We should leave everything to Krishna. What's the next step? Yes, Aditya. I know you all know this. Just that if I tell you, you said, "Arey, ye to mujhe pata tha." I know you all know this. Mataji, we should do our own karma, but we should leave the fruit to Krishna. Ke upar chhod dena ah, wo to sab chhod hi rahe. Wo to ho gaya. But we should offer our fruits to Krishna. What does mean offering it? Everyone knew this offer our food. Yeah, so offer our food to Krishna means that we'll be grateful to Krishna that you know because of you this thing happened. So Nishkam Karma Yoga. Yes, Nishkam. Yeah. So of uh, uh, Nishkam Karma Yoga means of course we should do our best. We should leave the rest to Krishna. We should, you know, uh, Krishna will take care of it, but at the same time, we should be thankful to Krishna. That is offering our foods to Krishna. So we should not forget. So thank Krishna. Because we this is my destiny, what do I do? No. So that doesn't mean that you know you grudge over things. Offer your fruits to Krishna. Yes, Krishna, thank you for whatever you've done to me. Yeah? That was so good, very nice. So now this is a bhakti yoga ladder, okay? So this bhakti yoga ladder, see, little, don't get uh, too much of this thing. Nee, bapri, itna sara information is slide. Pe. This is very easy slide, okay? It's, it's, a, it's a very self-explanatory one. But still, I will explain you in a very simple way. Okay. So first is, you know, living an animal life. Okay. So we also many a times live animal life. How? We just want to eat, sleep, and enjoy. Yeah. When we are just doing that, what does it mean? And many of our friends are doing it. Many of our people we know are doing it. They are just living life for enjoying. Yeah. That is called animal life. Next, above animal life. Okay, this is the this is the uh, progressive yoga ladder. Okay, so above animal life, what comes karma kand. Okay, so that is one step ahead. Progression. It is a little progress. Kya kar rahe hum log? We are we are living a regulated life. I mean, we are doing sense gratification. Everything we are doing, but at the same time, say we will do Durga puja. We will have Ganpati at our home. Or we will do Varshat Puja, or uh, you know, we will do Satyanarayan Puja. Some the other, other puja we will keep on doing. So we will do our sense gratification. We will have, we will go to, uh, we will we will have non veg, we will have drinks, we will go to the restaurants, and we will uh, go to parties. Everything we will do. At the same time, we will worship. Yes, yeah? so that's called Karma Kanda. Above this Karma Kanda, there is Sakama Karma Yoga. Okay, what does Sakama Karma Yoga means? That Okay, like I give an example of this marble uh, marble uh, shop, yeah, marble owner. He, he has a big marble business, but at the same time, what is he doing? He is offering some of his, his money as a donation to the Sri Krishna temple. So he knows, okay, whatever I am earning is because of Krishna. So he's offering his fruits to Krishna. He, he is, um, he knows that, you know, without Krishna, this wouldn't have been possible. But at the same time, he has a desire to earn big, uh, have a good business, have a good house, have a big car and live, live a very happy life wherein he knows that whatever is provided to me is provided by Krishna. Yeah? So that is Sakama Karma Yoga. Then comes Nishkama Karma Yoga. Now Nishkama Karma Yoga is what? Arjuna. Arjuna says Karishriya Vachanam Tava. So Krishna, whether there is kingdom, whether there is no kingdom for me to rule, I am still happy. Why? Whatever you say, I will do. Whatever you say, I will do. So I, I do not have my personal desires, but whatever you say, I will do. So that is Nishkam Karma Yoga. Hanuman. Hanuman never had any personal interest. Yeah, going to Lanka, flying to Lanka, Hanuman never did, had a personal interest. Hanuman never did that, you know, that I went to Lanka, so now Ram is going to be very happy with me. And Ram is going to be very, you know, uh, uh, he he's, he's going to praise me a lot. Yeah, Hanuman did not did, uh, do it for that. Yeah, that is Nishkama Karma Yoga. Yeah, doing this is for purification. These two are for enjoyment. Okay, so Karma Sakama Karma Yoga, Karma Kanda are for enjoyment. 
but this is still better much better than this far more better than this yeah and this is best now then comes the in the in the topmost of the bhakta of the yoga ladder comes the bhakti yoga which are the gopis you remember in the japa japa uh, um, session i told you the gopis had a headache uh, krishna had a headache yeah? and what i what did krishna say that if i get the dust of the feet of uh, my devotees then my headache will go and no one was ready to give the dust of the of the feet of the of uh, 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 their feet because they thought only oh, if krishna applies this on his uh, on his forehead i will we will have to go to hell but when they went to gopis gopis said whatever you want you take how much how much of dust you want you take because if krishna is krishna has a headache we cannot tolerate if krishna is in pain yeah so even if we have to go to hell we will go to hell doesn't matter yeah if whatever you please krishna just do it we will go to hell we will go whatever wherever krishna wants us we will go there but krishna should be happy yeah so that is bhakti yoga so similarly we do all the things only that pleases krishna not our own desire yeah so this is the progressive yoga ladder which is which is explained yeah? and how will this and how so today we are most of us including me yeah we are here somewhere here yeah we are all somewhere here yeah now if you have to go here yeah if you have to go from here to here what will we have to do what do we have to do nothing worship so lord with love and devotion and love chanting uh, mata ji yeah yeah chanting studying scriptures respect mata ji even if we do the less thing you have to do with it more consciousness you have to and love even if we do it with a even if we have a little you have to do it with all the love that you have mata ji sacrificing our selfish things for krishna mata ji we have to follow regulative principles and um, worship lord krishna and with love and devotion love and devotion absolutely yes bhai bhavi mata ji nishtam to you we have to serve krishna with our full devotion and we have to do work under krishna consciousness Absolutely. Yes, Arya. Yeah, uh, we have to do the uh, this work, uh, that work that uh, please Krishna. Absolutely, very nice. And yes, sir. And we offer uh, everything that Krishna wants and our food to Krishna. Absolutely, very nice. So you all, everyone understood this yoga ladder. So in that, the bottom of the yoga ladder is animal life. Yeah. then comes karma kand wherein you are doing you are performing you want to do you want to party also but at the same time you will do durga puja you will do ganesh puja and you will do i don't know whatever yeah so like that that is karma kand then comes sakam karma yoga that means you want to enjoy also but at the same time you will realize that whatever is given to you is given by krishna okay then comes nishkam karma yoga that is you do not want anything whatever krishna you know you will do only activity which pleases krishna and without any expectation and offering fruits to krishna and then comes bhakti yoga surrender to krishna bhakti yoga ya yeah? full surrender atma nivedana ya yeah? krishna whatever you want i will just do it for you yeah? so doesn't matter where what happens to me you are the point of uh, center of the focus yeah? that way so this is the yoga ladder any doubts on this yoga ladder if you have any doubts you may please ask Okay, this yoga ladder should be clear to everyone. Yes. Mata ji. Yes, beta. Can you explain uh, Sakama Karma Yoga again? So Sakama Karma Yoga means assuming that you know uh, Radhika wants to have a big house. Radhika wants to have a big car, and Radhika gets that big car. Radhika gets a big house. Radhika gets good marks, and Radhika is now in a very uh, good uh, job, and she is at a very good position. But at the same time, Radhika knows. that whatever krishna whatever is there it is because of krishna's mercy i i radhika knows that i would not have done it alone if krishna's mercy would not have been there so everything that is there in my life is because of the mercy of the lord so radhika offers all her fruits to the lord radhika prays to the lord my dear lord because of you i am blessed that is that is sakam karma so here what will you do here in karma kanda what will you do do 
I will do. I'm just giving example. Okay, don't 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 get stuck to the pujas that I'm mentioning because I do not know a list of pujas. So I'm just whatever two three pujas I know that only I'm keep on keeping on mentioning. So say I will do a Durga puja or I will do a Satyanarayan puja or I'll do Ganesh puja so that my business flourishes, so that oh, the the obstacle in my business and obstacle in my life goes away. Yeah. So I do it because there is some selfish motive. So I'm doing dealings with the Lord. Ah, may ye, uh, I will do this these number of fasts so that you know Krishna you, or Krishna ne, so that whoever the me God you're worshipping, you please help me with that, like that. So that is that is karma kanda. You're doing it with some motive. Yeah, that is the thing. Yes, otherwise I see your hand raised. Pucho. Pucho. Ma'am, can you please explain karma kanda once again? Karma Kanda is basically uh, we are doing with some selfish desire. So basically, I'm just giving a random example. Okay, please don't catch me by my words. Say I will do Bara Sumvar Me Karungi. I will do 12 Mondays. I'll fast on 12 Mondays so that the health of my someone closed one becomes uh, he, he stays healthy. Or I will do say five Tuesdays. I'll fast on five Tuesdays so that there are no obstacles in my husband's business. So whatever, whatever, uh, whatever uh, sacrifices we are doing, we are doing with the motive that I will get something in return. But I know they are powerful. So we are what is so we are what is saying. We know that they are powerful and we know that they can bless us. So that consciousness is there. That consciousness is not there in this animal life because animal life does not believe presence of God. Is this clear? Mataji. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, Riddhi. Mataji, Hanuman is an example of Bhakti, no, Mataji. But, bhakti and but... yes, Bhakti, Nishkam, Karma Yoga, yes, absolutely. But on the Bhakti, Bhakti Yoga ladder, the topmost devotees which are there, are, are the gopis. So, of course, Hanuman is there, but, but in the scriptures, the topmost level, because if you even if you see in the Goloka chart, the, the, the first circle of, I'll, I'll show you it in the end, the first circle which is there is the, of the Ashtasatis. And all the devotees, they come a little later, but first, topmost circle is for the Ashtasatis and Satis of uh, the gopis. Yeah? Yeah, Mataji. So, they are right. They are, he's doing Nishkam Karma Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. Absolutely. Yes, Sanvi, you have a question? Uh, yes, Mataji. Mataji, what is the difference between ka karma, karma Kanda and Sakam Karma Yoga? Because both are done with the motive. No, but here, here the thing is, here it is a little self, selfless. Here, I don't do, I don't fast five, five Tuesdays or I don't fast it 12 Mondays because I want to get something. So here, it, here, this is much better because here the rec, even if it is written that if there is selfish desire maybe, but even but here it is still it is still pure. Why? Because here I know my consciousness is a little different here. Here my consciousness is very selfish. But here my consciousness is not that selfish. Okay. Okay. Yes, uh, Shitan, you have a point. Want to say something? Mataji, can you explain me? Uh, Nishkama Karma Yoga? Nishkama Karma Yoga. Nishkama Karma Yoga means doing things only for the pleasure of Krishna, doing our best and leaving things to Krishna. Mataji, I have a question. Yes. Mataji, uh, why are the gopis in, the, in a higher position than Hanuman? Hanuman has so much Islam. Is he I will, can I explain you that at the end because I, it, it will completely divert the topic. I will swear I'll explain that thing to you to you in the end, okay? Mataji, one yes, Pandave. Yes. Mataji, uh, in your Nishkam Karmayoga, there is written goal is purification. Can you put some light on this? Goal is purification. So goal is purification. So why why would we do Nishkam Karma Yoga? Now I am telling you, okay, I am telling you all the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Why am it why, why are you listening it with a lot of attention and uh, uh, this thing? What is your intention in attending Bhagavad Gita classes? To, to know more about Krishna. 
know more about Krishna, right? Absolutely. Now, why why is it why is it so important to know about Krishna? You could have studied Narendra Modi also. You could have studied anyone else. Why Krishna? Because Krishna is the supreme personality of God, right? Eventually, eventually, Bhagavad Gita is a manual of life, and we want to we want to relieve us ourselves through all this cycle of birth and death, suffering, and how can we be peaceful and free from anxiety and free from stress and all that. And when we will become free from stress and anxiety and, you know, when our heart is purified. When our heart is purified, then we will work in a Krishna conscious way. Yeah. When our heart gets purified, the Paramatma sitting in our heart, he tells us and we listen to the Paramatma sitting in our heart. When we are distracted, when we are Bhu Shakha, if the Paramatma tells us so many things, but we are not able to hear. Why? Because our heart is not purified. That is why we should do Nishkam Karma Yoga. So we attain purification and we will we get a chance to go back home back to God that way. Okay, Mataji. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on. Shrita, Shrita, Dan, any, any questions? Sarthak, you have a question? Mataji. Yes. Ah. Mata, Mataji. Yes. Mataji, can you explain Bhakti Yoga? Mm, Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga means doing yes. everything for Krishna with lots of love. Yes, okay, so like your mother. Yes. Mother loves you, right? Does your mother think that, oh, Sartak is when Sartak becomes big, then he'll take care of me. And that is the reason why I should love Sartak. Does your mother think that any point in time? Mataji. Uh, Shritan asked, huh? okay, Shritan now. She would never think like that, right? Whether whether you, uh, uh, you know, uh, insult her, whether you are rude at her, whether you shout at her, maybe she will, she will, she will uh, get upset with you. Or maybe she will scold you, but still she will come to you, right? That is the love your mother has for you. Right? Come what may, your mother will not leave you. Whatever, however so you behave, behave, your mother will never leave you. Like that, Gopi's love is there for Krishna. Whatever happens, Gopi's will not leave Krishna. Krishna is a life and soul. Like the children is a life and soul for their mother. Right? Your mother will never leave you. Even if you do gross mistakes also, your mother will never leave you. She will shout at you. She will scold you. She will get upset with you, but she will never leave you. You understanding the point? That yes, is the I... love. And same love Gopis had for Krishna. That is Bhakti Yoga. The love and affection for the Lord. Come what may, I will not leave you. Mataji? Mataji? Yes. There will be a lot of points to cover. You got stuck on this slide. But it's good you're asking questions because when you're asking questions, that means you're thinking. I'm very happy you're all actually asking questions. Yes, good. Yes, Ayutik Shri. Mataji, one more time, my mother will beat me. It's okay if your mother beats you. Mother what is the problem? Your mother will. Your mother loves you also. Your mother is the one who will feed you also, right? You are healthy and fine just because of your mother, right? Mataji, my mother will not feed me. I will, I only eat Mataji. You go with your mother, oh my God. Oh, you should never do that. Never ever do that. Okay? So from now onwards, the teacher is not going to do that. Okay? Promise? Good girl. Promise. Good girl. Chalo, let's move ahead now. Are you have a question? One second. Are you have a question? Mataji, can you explain animal life again? Animal. animal life. Animal life means for those people, Krishna is not there only in their life. They do not believe in God. They think life is there for enjoyment. Yeah, weekends is there for enjoyment. Come on, let us go out and go for a picnic on the weekends. So whole week we will work and on the weekends we'll go out and enjoy. Whole day we will work in the evening, we will have drinks and watch movie like that. So we'll earn money just to enjoy. There is no Krishna in their life. I have money because I worked hard. Yeah, like that. That is animal life. Mataji. Clear, Arya? Yes, yes, Arya. 
Madhaji, I have a doubt that uh, 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 what is the difference between Bhakti Yoga and Nishkam Karma Yoga? Yeah, Bhakti Yoga and Nishkam Karma Yoga. Nishkam Karma Yoga you will do with a desire for purification. Of course, you will do, with, if there will be desire for the pleasure of the Lord, of course. But Bhakti Yoga, a lot of love is involved in Bhakti Yoga, which may or may not be there in Nishkam Karma Yoga. But Bhakti Yoga involves pure love for Krishna. That way. You saw, right, today, today I told you in the Japa session, I told you the story about the wives of the Brahmanas. Yes. What did they do? They took all the food to Krishna and Balram. They did not bother that, you know, they will be kicked out of the house and they will not be able to enter it back into the house. They gave up everything for Krishna. And Nishkama Karma Yoga, you may or you may not give. Right? But in Bhakti Yoga, you will just give everything for Krishna. So, Mataji, those uh, wives were uh, gopis only. Yes, they were gopis only. Yeah? Sure. Let's move ahead now. Okay, sure. Good. Interesting. Interesting questions. From all of you. Yes. Now, we come to the fifth verse of chapter 6. Yeah? So, Krishna says here, one more. So, this is about the, so this is, this is about the mind. Okay? So now Krishna in this in this chapter talks more about the mind. Uh, mind come, uh, how does the mind distract, mind control, and so many different things it talks about the mind in this chapter. Okay. Let's see. So Krishna says, one must deliver himself with the help of his mind and not degrade himself. The mind is the friend of the conditioned soul, and the mind is the enemy also of the conditioned soul. Yeah. So then Krishna further says. For the one, for one who has conquered his mind, one who has taken control over his mind, the mind is his best friend, but one who has failed to take a control over his mind, the mind becomes his worst enemy, the greatest enemy. Can you, can you, can someone give me, I'm not going to ask too many questions, okay? Can uh, one, someone just raise your hand and tell me, how, with which situation is mind your best friend? Give me one situation. Just, just 20 seconds, the situation should not be very long. Anyone else who's not spoken? Mataji. One second. One Mataji, second. Mataji, 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 Mataji. Ah, Prapti. Okay, chalo, Prapti. Can I chat this loka? I don't want to chat. I have asked the situation. I don't want to ask the situation. Situation is asked. Hold on. Ah? Yes, Shrithan. Mataji? Mataji, when our best friend is in danger. No, no. Example, do example. Mataji, one more, I know. One second, one second. Yes, Pranjal. Raise your hand. Go be bold and raise your hand. Yes, Pranjal. Itne saare hands raised hai baap ne. Mataji. Yes, Pranjal, fast. To, to, make, to make the mind your best friend, you have to engage it into Krishna's... No, 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 that's what I'm saying. Give me a situation when mind was your best friend. I see, Mataji. Mataji. Hold on, I'm giving... Mind was your best friend. Okay, yes, Swara. Mataji, I see. Swara, hold on, you raise your hand. Mataji, can I see? 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 Exam. Yes, what I know quickly. When I was giving exam. Mataji. When you were giving exam, then what happened? Mataji. Uh, my mind helped me to write the answer. Mataji, may I say? Mataji, can I say? Okay, yes, Swara, yes. Mataji, uh, when uh, uh, two foods are kept in front of us, healthy and junk, then we choose healthy food. Okay, very nice. Yes, Nikshita. Mataji. Uh... Quickly. You can come back. Yes, I have one more example. I'll now wait, Swara. Mataji. Yes, Sanskriti. Quickly, unmute and speak. Come on, fast. We don't have much time. Yeah. Uh, one time when um, my mother had uh, said me not to eat one, uh, one lollipop, I first I thought uh, I should not listen, but then I thought no need. I will agree with my mother. 
अरे वो बताती हूँ एंड में एंड में बताती हूँ ये युक्ति श्री मैं बताऊंगी आप एंड तक रुकना अपने हैंड रेज रखना Now how can this knife be used for the good cause and how can this knife be used for a bad cause Yes spider man don't don't log in as spider man who has logged in as spider man Who has logged in as spider man Yes yes abine Yes mata ji mata ji knife can be used in a good way as a surgeon can use use that to save someone's life and A murderer can do that to kill someone. Absolutely, very nice. Very well. So the knife can be used to kill someone, or the knife can be used to save someone's life. The same knife can be used to cut vegetables to make Krishna Prasad, or same knife can be just used to spoil things. Yeah. So very nice. You know, the hand raise, the hand raise. Look, there are many questions coming. Okay. So similarly, so this knife is compared to our mind. it can help us to become your best friend or it can help us or it can you know create a ruckus and make your make your the worst enemy okay? okay so now you see this in this situation is why is the mind not our best friend roshni gupta because in mobile we have many apps and uh, while we are studying we go to another app and my mind was divert Mind got mind get distracted. So what is the way we should, which what should we what should we tell our mind in such situation, Riddhi? Something. Mother, ji, first we should give priority to studying because we are studying. Yeah. yeah. So how will you how will you avoid these distractions? Like when our goal is perfect, then we we'll, we won't be distracted by this. No? Absolutely. Yeah. So then here this situation. Yes, who has not yet answered? Yes, Namish. What will happen if we study like this? If we study like this, we will not be able to focus focus and uh, in one thing. Yeah, and Yashwin, what will be the results of such distracted mind? What is it? Any sir? Ma'am, we will not be able. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, quickly. Ma, Mata ji, it will not. Uh, it will distract us from studying, and uh, we will not. We will not be able to. Yeah, what will be the results? We will lose. We will lose our focus, and uh, we will forget everything that we studied a few minutes ago. And uh, absolutely, absolutely. So, what are the results of this? Who will answer? Who is not able to answer? Yes, Advait. What are the results of this? We are 
You will be distracted. You will be distracted. Yes, Keshav. Keshav is enjoying it. Yes, Kushali. What will be the results of this? Mataji, uh, can I tell you? What happened? अनन्यानली But we is who? Is Anna? Does Anna's body plays all this mischief? Does Anna's brain plays all this mischief? Who plays all this mischief? Brain. 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 अच्छा. Uh, yes, Swara Inge. Who plays all this mischief? Pata ji, mind. Swara, you have to. अच्छा. I will ask you, Swara Inge. Swara Guru Prasad is answering. Okay. Don't do that, Swara. अच्छा माता जी ओके वाई इज इट नॉट सेम Why? Why the intelligence of a two-year and ten-year-old is not same? Acha, how can we make our intelligence strong? Mata ji, by studying. By studying what? Physics, chemistry, geography. No, Mata ji. Mata ji, what question? How can we make our intelligence strong? Come on, easy, easy question. Easy, easy question. Mataji, by studying Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, by studying Mataji. Bhagavad Gita. By studying Bhagavad Gita. And also long shloka. Acha, very good, very nice. Is Subha Shri is Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavad Gita are very regular scripture that anyone can understand. Subha Shri. No, no, Mataji, it is not. Uh, no, a person will without selfishness who is not jealous. who knows the meaning of the life and what is our goal that person can only uh, understand bhagavad gita very Mataji, nice branch sir what are the three requisites for a person to understand bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam you are supposed to uh, submissively uh, question question a person who is expert in uh, the learnings of bhagavad gita Yes, very good. Very nice. Is one one very important requisite that is required for understanding Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam. Yes, Aditya Upadhyay. 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 Aditya
we need to chant nicely if you do not chant we will hey, not you know, understand you know, bhagavad gita mataji can i ask something who is that yes sachi sachi wants to ask you may start with over mataji uh, there are a lot of things that distract our mind and one of those things is maya yeah yeah absolutely so so where was i yeah so to understand the scriptures bhagavad gita and bhagavad gita mataji when class will over hold on so if we have to if we have to understand bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam it is very important that we become a devotee of krishna and we become a uh, we are friend of krishna and how do we become devotee of krishna by chanting so it is very very important understand this very the very important point which i am making okay if you if you all are in, interested in understanding bhagavad gita you need to chant at least one round of hare krishna mahamantra if you if you chant nicely it will help you focus in your studies it will this this vyavasayatmika buddhi this day dreaming will not be there in your life slowly, Mata, slowly ji, every morning before going to school i uh, i first um, pray to god who is this sharvil sharvil what is your name you should rename no beta how will i know this sharvil okay somebody has joined a spider man 10 times i said don't join a spider man Do you think you are Spider Man? Think any which it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, um, uh, but your attendance will not be recorded, na? Huh? Spider Man. Uh, where was I? Ha. Huh? So understand one thing. At least one round of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra if you chant, you will understand Bhagavad Gita very easily. Otherwise, it will be difficult. So, my humble request to all of you: chant at least one round, minimum one round. Minimum, ah. Huh? If you are chanting four round, five rounds, eight rounds, please continue to do that. But minimum one round you should chant. Then only, otherwise you will you will you will be in this phase. Understand that you will be in this phase. You will be in this phase. You will not come if if you are not into this, you will get into this. So it is a warning signal that you know you you are at the right age of come here. Chant at least one round of Bhagavad Gita, uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Otherwise you will be in this phase. Okay. Now further quickly, yeah. Too many things to cover. Another fifteen twenty minutes. Now Krishna is also explaining about the Ashtanga Yoga. Now to make your mind calm. Now Krishna is telling us that you know there are various methods. One of the method which Krishna is telling is about Ashtanga Yoga. In this Ashtanga Yoga, he is telling us how do we sit. Yeah. So we sit in a calm place, back straight, no movement, focus at the tip of your nose and medit meditate on beautiful form of Krishna. Now many of you, you attend Japa session. Do you really do sit like this? No, Mataji. Yeah. Everything no, Mataji. under the sky is happening. My mother is talking with someone. My father is talking with someone. What is my brother doing? What is my sister doing? Everything we are focusing on, other than Krishna. Yeah. Is that the right way to do? No. So Krishna himself is prescribing here one of the methods. Yeah. How should we do? How should we sit? We should sit like this. Sit in a sit in a calm place. Back straight. No movement. Focus at the tip of your nose and meditate and and chant. Yeah, chant the name of Krishna. Chant with lots of love. You saw on the yoga ladder, Bhakti Yoga and Nishkama Karma Yoga. Yeah, Bhakti Yoga now is registered in your mind. That slide was there on the screen for a long time. If you have to reach the Bhakti Yoga stage, you should chant nicely. With lots of devotion and sitting like this, which is mentioned on the slide. Yeah. So Krishna is saying you do not have to give up prescribed duties. You do not have to drop family and take sannyas. Just sit like this, chant my name, and you will become peaceful and you will get into bhakti yoga. Yeah. So, but, then, but then hold on, hold on. I'll come to the questions. Just hold. Write your questions, okay? If you have any question, write. I'll take each and every question. I'll take in the in the end. Yeah. But Krishna says, you know, Arjuna says, Krishna, there is Krishna, uh, Krishna further talks here, okay? Then what are the obstacles? Yeah, there are, there are many obstacles. We are not able to sit like this, yeah? We are not able to sit like this. So there are many obstacles on the path of bhakti, on the path of, uh, on the path of uh, you know, being a yogi. What are the obstacles? So Krishna, so Arjuna, so Krishna is telling, yeah, how, you, how he, can you become a good yogi? He is giving few tips. He is giving few secrets. What are the secrets? One who is regulated in his habits of eating, sleeping, recreation, and work. 
Dad is eligible to practice yoga system. So if one eats too much or one eats too less or sleeps too much or sleeps less, yeah, then he will not be able to practice yoga system. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think all these people he he is not slept entire night because he was watching a movie? He's still watching a movie at 1:30 in the night. He is overeating. Yeah. And this person, of course, you should go for a family trip, but every weekend you are just going and just enjoying, and Krishna is not there in your life, that is not good. Yeah. And then sleeping like this at 11 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock in the morning and missing out the Japa sessions. Yeah, you will never become, you'll never become eligible to become an OMP. Yeah. A yogi doesn't mean that you know you have to give up everything. Yeah, that is what I explained. Yogi means it's a it's a state of mind. A state of mind being peaceful and focused on Krishna. That is a yogi. Yogi doesn't mean that you have to wear saffron clothes, have a big long beard, and go and sit in the Himalayas or in the forest. That I am not talking about that yogi. I am talking about yogi, a state of mind where your mind is peaceful and focused on Krishna. Yeah. So then how do we avoid too much eating? Yeah. How do we avoid too much of sleep? So Krishna say, last will over. You have to leave Krishna, then maybe you can leave because 15 20 minutes this class will continue, okay? Okay, Mata. Yes. So eating habits, how should be the eating habits of a Krishna conscious person? Yeah. He eats a Krishna conscious person, he eats only food which is offered to Krishna. So he eats only prasadam. He observes ekadashi. Yeah, he does not okay. eat too much. That is, he will he will uh, he will not be he will not be able to sleep, or you know he will have gases and stomach upset and all, and he will not be able to sleep, or he should not eat too less. That you know he is hungry, and then he is not able to sleep in the night early uh, early in the night. Yeah, and he then if you do all these three things, Krishna is only saying, huh? this is nothing and nothing is of my own." Everything Krishna is saying in 6.16. Yeah. He is saying, yeah, all this, all, if you do all these three, you will be competent to become a yogi. Yeah. If what happens with more eating, then you will have dreams. Yeah. And then more sleep is required. Yeah. And then here, you know, Prabhupada is also explaining that you should have six hours sleep. Even for children, six hours sound sleep is more than enough. If you are sleeping more than six hours, you are in Tamogun. Six to eight hours, maximum eight hours, but not more than eight hours. Yeah. So such a person is eligible to become a Now in this state, will you ever remember Krishna? You will never remember oh, Krishna in this state. Yeah. But in this stage, in this stage, will you remember Krishna? In this stage, will you remember Krishna? Yes. Yes, Mataji. Yes, Mataji. Krishna is yes. only telling this, yeah. Yes, no. Mataji. So Krishna is saying, involve all your senses in Krishna's service. So tongue in eating prasadam, nose to take fragrance of the flowers to offer to the Lord, then hand touch, touching devotees, touching their feet, eyes to take darshan of the Lord, ears to hear about the Lord, hands to cleanse the temple. Now we have an altar in our home. To clean the temple, offer flowers, words to describe the glories of the Lord, head to bow down before the Lord, mind to think about the Lord and not think about what is what, what my friend would have sent and all that, and legs to visit the temple. Yeah. So every organ that we have can be, you know, engaged in Krishna's service. Yeah. Then Krishna says, if you do not have distractions, like we saw that boy, right? This boy, which boy did we see? Where did we see this? Yeah, this boy, yeah. So if we have all these distractions, then Krishna is saying, you know, the, this flame, the, the flame is considered to be you. And if do, we do not have distractions, then this flame will be very steady. But if you have distractions, like, you know, all distractions coming in, the flame will not be steady. So mind in samadhi. Otherwise, what will happen if there is too much of wind? Will this flame be steady? No. And what does this wind compare to? All the distractions. Yeah. So he's saying, so Krishna is only giving this example, okay? Krishna is giving this example to Arjuna. Just like a lamb in, wind, in windless place does not waver, 
Similarly, a steady mind in samadhi will not waver. Samadhi means, you know, being in, this, being in this state. If you are in this state, you will always be peaceful. You will always be calm. You will always be good at your studies. Your sports will be very nice. And then you will do Sakama Karma Yoga and then Krishna Nishkama Karma Yoga stage. Then Krishna is saying that you know we should engage in yoga with determination and faith and should not be deviated from this path. Okay. So Krishna is saying if you want to achieve this, uh, 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 you know, want to achieve the yoga stage of life, then you have you should have determination. Yeah. So a few few stories I'm going to tell you now. Okay. Few stories are there. Yeah. So there was this monkey. Yes, beta. What? Determination. 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 Yes, I am going to do it. Yeah, Harini says, every day morning I am going to get up early and I am going to chant one round. What is that? That is a promise that you make to yourself. Right? Yes. Harini says, you know, this time I am going to study so hard that, you know, I'll, my scores will be very good. That is determination. Yes, I will do it that way. So here Krishna is saying that you should have determination to become a yogi. Yeah. To practice yogi, become a yoga, yeah, become a yogi. Yeah. So there was this monkey, and this monkey, so this story is of a monkey who lacked determination. So this monkey actually one day he decided, decided that he's going to fast for Ekadashi. Okay. So he decides that he's going to fast. And all his friends are now worried that this monkey is going to fast. Our friend is going to fast and others will keep names. Okay. So your friend is fasting and you are not fasting. You are like, you know, such a bad uh, monkey and all. So then they decided, we'll do some tricks and we'll not let this monkey only fast. So then they all, this group of friends, monkey friends, they go to this monkey and then they tell this monkey, see my dear monkey, see if you fast, no, you will become so weak, so weak. Next day, Dwadashi day, you will become very weak. What you do is you keep keep, keep this monkey, keep this uh, banana with you so that you will uh, no, you, you you will so tomorrow on the Dwadashi day as soon as the Dwadashi fast breaking time is there you can just eat that banana. So this monkey says, "Ah, you are right. I should keep this banana with me." So then uh, the other friend says, "Are what you will you are doing Nirjala Ekadashi? So in that so you will not be even able to lift the banana. What you do is you just peel the banana off." And keep it with you so that you know uh, and cut it into pieces so that next day, Dwadashi day, fast breaking time, immediately you can eat the banana. So it's ah, you're right. The third friend says, Are but you are you remember you're doing Nirjala. So in Nirjala, you will not be you will not have energy even to lift the uh, banana and put it in their mouth. What you do is you put the banana in the mouth now only. So that, you know, on the, the, the Dwadashi day, you will, uh, the, there is there is no problem for you. Now, do you think the monkey who is putting the banana in his mouth will not be eating the banana? He no. eat the banana. Now, you know, so his friends have tricked him. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. So his friends have tricked him and he is now. He is Mataji, why, the monkeys, why monkeys' friends are uh, uh, Getting jealous. So this monkey's friends? This monkey's friend is our mind. So uh, this monkey's friend is our mind who always will keep on telling us to do wrong things. So mind is such a such a you know creature. Or Ji, whatever. Why did the monkey uh, uh, say no to all those things which he Yes, so that is that is a determination. So this is the monkey who is lacking determination. The monkey should have monkey should have just shoot out uh, shoot out his friends. Please don't come to me. Please don't distract me. All this uh, monkey friends were distracting this monkey from doing the right thing. And that is what mind does. Mind will distract you from doing ri uh, right things. And when you do the wrong thing, mind will say, oh, really? Why did you do this? You know you should not have done this. And still you did it. But the mind will play the games uh, double dholki jaisa. Yaan se bhi bolega, maa se bhi bolega. It will tell you to, it will motivate you to do wrong things. But at the same time, it will say, and after you've done the wrong things, sorry. Oh, why did you do it? You did not know you should not have done it. Like that. Okay. So this is the game of the mind. Now we should be very careful with the mind. Yeah. Then uh, this, this is the story of a, of a sparrow. This, this sparrow, 
uh, this, the the eggs of the sparrow. So the sparrow had actually made a nice nest on the on the seashore, and she had laid down eggs in that nest. Now one day, this this uh, a big wave came from the ocean, and all the eggs of the sparrow uh, the sparrow they got washed away. Now when the sparrow came in the evening, she realized that all her all her eggs have been washed away by the ocean. She became so angry, so angry with the ocean. She said. Ocean, the ocean, you have to give my eggs right away. Why did you wash away my eggs? So then ocean did not reply. Two days, three days, ocean did not reply. This this sparrow got so angry. She said, I am going to I am going to dry up all the water in the ocean. And then she was picking up the water in her beak and she was, you know, uh, uh, she was picking the water from the ocean and she was throwing it away. Now whole day she is doing this and all her friends are watching and laughing at her. That point in time, Garuda was flying over over this uh, over this place, and Garuda is watching this small this sparrow. The sparrow is really small, right? And she she takes this water in her beak and she's throwing it there. He was wondering what is this sparrow doing. The, the 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 Garuda comes down, and Garuda asks, "What are you doing, my little sparrow?" Sparrow. Then she tells all the stories. See my see my eggs. You know, ocean god has taken my eggs, and she starts crying. And then Garuda, Garuda is who? Who is Garuda? How is Garuda related to Vishnu? Chariot of Vishnu. Chariot of Vishnu, absolutely. So then Garuda is chariot of Vishnu. Garuda took a big fall. Chariot of Vishnu Mataji. And he then warned Ocean. You will, you will, you please give my, give the eggs back. Otherwise, you know, I, I will dry up the ocean. And you know, the sparrow may not be able to do it, but I can do it. And then this ocean god immediately came and handed over the eggs to the sparrow. So this is determination. The sparrow was determined. Like that, Krishna is saying in, your, in, in this yoga, you should be determined that you want to become like a yogi. You want to act like a yogi. Yeah, You want to you should behave like a yogi. And Krishna has also given what are things you should do to become, to, to become a yogi. Okay? So this is about Hanuman. Hanuman also had determination that you know, once he came to know from Sampati that um, Sita Maya is there, he was determined to find find whereabouts of Sita. Yeah? This is Arjuna. Yeah? So then here Krishna is saying in 6.26 that how should you bring your mind back? Yeah, if it doesn't listen to you, like our mother, you know, she she holds our ears. Maybe she may not be holding our ears physically, but she but she shouts at us when we are when we do wrong things. Similarly, when our mind does wrong things, we should just bring it back to place. Yeah. Then Krishna is saying that, that Krishna is explaining the true qualities of a yogi in 6.29 and 6.30. He says that a true yogi observes me in all living beings. Yeah. We saw this, right? Pandita Samadarshina. He says everyone is a child of God. And he sees me everywhere and sees everything in me. And he sees that I am never lost. To such a yogi, I am never lost, not he is lost to me. So then he defines what are the qualities of the yogi. So then further he is. Now Arjuna is a little confused. Arjuna is telling Krishna, you have told me everything about yogi. You told us about mind. You told us about controlling the mind. You told us about everything. But Krishna, it is so difficult to control the mind. I mean, we can control the wind. But it is not possible to control the mind. Yeah. So now Krishna is answering that. Yeah. So this again, I'll not go into this story. I'll just skip this one. I'll skip this one. Yeah, so then so uh, this also I'll skip. Okay. I think yeah. More how many minutes are there? 10 minutes, 10 minutes, we're almost done, yeah. So then Krishna is so basically what well, the mind is so difficult. Then Krishna is also telling that you know you 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 should you will be able to control your mind by focusing on me and all that. Krishna tells this, okay. Now mind here, I just wanted to show you. Can you see your mind? Can anyone see your mind? If your you mind. do operation of the brain, if you do operation of the heart, can we see our mind? Mind is not gross. So if you see this white dark line, this is our body. Yeah? This is our gross body. Oh, sorry. And this this yellow part, this is our soul. Yeah? 
and is soul independent is soul alone in the body who accompanies the soul the super soul which is yeah. parmatma yes the super soul is there with us if, if if super soul leaves our body will we leave no will we, will we be alive no. no so super soul is always there with the jiva jiva is the soul and the super soul yeah so so this yellow part is the jiva and this dotted part is the mind mind intelligence false ego can you see our intelligence if we if we do operation on the brain uh, if we open the brain can we see intelligence mind coming out Oh, Mata Ji, we cannot or see. Everybody, oh, your is the intelligence. Your is the mind. Can we see it? No. So, oh, mind Mata is subtle. Ji. Mind is subtle. So, science deal with the gross matter. Bhagavad Gita deals with the subtle matter, this dot, dotted part. Science does not deal with the subtle matter. And everything in Bhagavad Gita is, is about the subtle part. How to control the mind, how to what body, soul, everything. Yeah? yeah. So how do we feed our mind? What determines our behavior? What are the type of movies we see? What we feed our mind with? What are the kinds of books we read? Yeah. So all these things are there for the mind. Yeah. Now Krishna in the end. Last 5-10 minutes. Huh? We are almost done. Now Krishna in the end. Uh, Arjuna. Okay. So my mind we all saw. And you know it is very easy. And so Krishna, Arjuna is saying Krishna it is so you know, uh, difficult to control the mind and many times we can slip okay many times we will make mistakes and sometimes we may make small mistakes and sometimes we may make very big mistakes yeah now what happens if you make such mistakes so see this human life is very precious we know that yeah and in this human life we keep on so earlier say, assuming that you know you all are children nice children till 15 years of your age you studied Bhagavad Gita nicely you uh, did chanting nicely. Now you go to college. Now in college, you know, sometimes there could be a situation you get distracted. Now, in, in our city, for four or five years, you did not do bhakti at all. You got completely distracted and you got a big job, nice job, and you are in a good position. You started earning money and you completely forgot Bhagavad Gita. You completely forgot Krishna. Does Krishna forget you? No, Mataji. No, Mataji. He always will be Krishna. always with us. No, Mataji. So, Krishna doesn't forget. So, to this, uh, so you, uh, Arjuna is asking Krishna, Oh, Krishna, what is the destination of unsuccessful transcendentalist who in the beginning takes up the process of self realization with faith, but who later, you know, desists with the worldly mindness, mindedness? So, what will happen to him? Yeah. So, your example was given about Saubari Muni. So Saubari Muni, you know, he was cursed by Garuda. And that is the reason why Saubari Muni was a you know, uh, 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 very, uh, um, very mystic yogi. Yeah. And Saubari Muni was cursed by Garuda. And Saubari Muni, so he, he, he was staying in the water for a thousand years. He was not even breathing. Yeah. So uh, Saubari Muni got distracted. Saubari Muni saw two fishes mating and he got distracted. And so he came out of um, the water and then he had, you know, he married some 50 wives, uh, 50 princesses and all. So he, he fell down. Who is this in the next picture? Uh, Vishwamitra. Vishwamitra fell, fell, fell down to main car. Yeah. So uh, uh, Arjuna is asking, what will happen to them if, if, some, if some yogi just falls down like this? So Krishna is saying, even if someone falls down like this, I'll just read out this, yeah. Uh, so even if the yogis, even if someone falls down, so in, in this life, if you fall down, of course, Krishna will give chance. Like the, uh, this example is there, right? The example, if you fall down in this life, like you know the example of Ajamil. Ajamil at the end of the, uh, on his deathbed, Yudhishthu Dutas came and they gave him a chance and, uh, and Ajamil got a chance to go back home, back to Godhead. But assuming that in this entire life you forgot, say up to 15 years of your age, you did nice Bhagavad Gita, you studied it nicely, and, you're, and, and then you completely forgot about it. So in next life, what will happen? Next life. So here example is given of Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj in his life, you know, he uh, he he wanted, you know, to, to focus on Krishna, wanted to meditate on Krishna, got distracted to this deer. And then because he got distracted to this deer, in his next birth, he took, took a body of a deer. But, in, but Krishna gave him remembrance. And then from the body of the deer, when he got a, body of this Jad Bharat, he remembered, I made a mistake. This time I'm not going to make a mistake. Yeah. So like that, Krishna gives us intelligence. Krishna never leaves us. 
This is the example of Gajendra. Gajendra in his previous life was Indra Maharaj. He did some mistake. He got a body of an elephant. But he remembered the prayers. He remembered the prayers and Krishna, he came back. Came back to Gajendra's uh, rescue. And Gajendra was able to go back home. Yeah. So like this, Krishna gives an example. Yeah. Then, then last shloka, okay. Before last five minutes. So Krishna says, that, okay, so quickly I will read this because this is important. Huh? So what happens in the next life? He takes birth Mata in a family ji. of transcendentalist. Mataji, yeah. Mataji, can I leave yeah. the class because I want yes. to go outside? Yes, 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 you can leave the class. No problem. So, so unsuccessful yogi, he takes birth in a family, in a, in a pious family. So for example, all of you, each one of you, Maybe some things are left in the previous life and that is the reason why you have taken birth in such wonderful families. This is wonderful parents that your parents are encouraging you to study Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, It is not that you are learning Bhagavad Gita just by chance. Understand each one of you. You are not learning Bhagavad Gita just by chance. In your previous life, you have done something very good and maybe that time your bhakti was left out and that is the reason why in this life you are learning Bhagavad Gita. You are reciting shlokas. So nicely you are reciting shlokas. Today Gopikit, all hands raised. I was just thinking, is this a japa session or a shloka session? It was so nice to see. And this doesn't come by chance. You have all carried in previous, your pious deeds. And that is why you are able to do this. And that is why you are taking interest in Bhagavad Gita. Okay? So this is, I worked your previous life. He automatically becomes attached. See here, it is mentioned. Krishna is only writing here. Okay? I am not writing anything. These are Krishna's words. He says that by virtue of his divine consciousness of his previous life, he automatically becomes attracted to the yogic principles. And that is why you are attracted to study Bhagavad Gita, even without seeking them. Such an inquisite, inquisite matlab, very, um, uh, kya hai? In inquisitive is, uh, I don't remember, I don't know in Hindi now what to say. Okay, he inquisitive transcendentally stands always above the ritualistic principles of the scriptures. And such yogi, like all of you, engage yourself in sincere endeavor in making further progress. Why are you all are here? Because you want to make further progress, right? And that is why all of you are here. So that is what Krishna is saying. So you can relate all 42, 43, 44, 45 shlokas related to yourself. And you will understand why you are studying Bhagavad Gita. Yeah? So in the end, yes, Harini? Uh, what is been my little last... Which, what is? Ritualistic principle of scriptures. Ritualistic principles of, always above ritualistic principles of scriptures. So, for example, ritual is what? For example, every day your mother decides, your, every day there is a ritual in her house to offer same milk to the Lord. Okay? So, Harini, Harini's granny, for example, okay, just for example, Harini's granny tells us that in our house, every day morning we offer milk to the Lord. Okay, Harini every day offers milk to the Lord. But she is just doing it because her granny told, who told her to do. But when she studies Bhagavad Gita, she understands that the milk is to be offered to the Lord with love and devotion. So earlier, Harini was just doing ritual because her grandmother had told her to do. But now Harini is doing the same ritual. So that doesn't become a ritual. Now Harini is offering it because with lots of love, love and devotion. You understood this? One is just doing it because, you know, your it is the rule book. Your grandmother has said, your grandmother has said, you know, or Panditji has said, Ki ye karo, and you are doing it. But other is understanding it, why you are doing it. So it is above the ritualistic principles. Understood, Harini? Okay, good. Very nice. So then in the end, so this is the last shloka of the day. Then Krishna says, okay, he says, Yogi naam api sarvesham madka tenantar atmana shraddhavan bhajati yomam same yukta tamu omataha. He says, of all the yogis, one with great faith, listen very carefully, abides in me, thinks of me within himself, and render loving service to me. He is most intimately united with me in yoga. And highest of all. This is my opinion. Understood this? 
very nice. Okay, good. So very nice, very good. So this this is the last yes. look of the. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is the last look of the day, and we will end our class here. But just hold on. I'm just going to stop the recording. Mm -hmm. So we'll end our session here.